Let's nice. see if we can get this guy no. in the boat. Now, nice oh, and oh, easy, fish. easy, easy, All easy. Right. Keep him away from the other boat motor. You know, the funny thing is, what time did we start today? 11? So yeah. It's not like we started early. There we go. All oh, right. Beautiful. You, you're working your way up. They're getting bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I figure, you know, if we can get up to 10 pounds by the end of oh, the day, yeah. we're doing good. Yeah. Getting walleyes, the guys would love to catch. They would get up at 4 in the morning to try to get walleyes like this. Come on, get that nose out. Oh, you want it to go? There. Now you should see it. Look at that. Gorgeous walleye. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Insect Defend Patch, deep free protection from biting insects. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. All right, Aaron and Aaron. Beautiful. <laughs> we got a fish on. Oh, nice. nice hey. Oh, I just. Success. Okay, hold on. I'll be right with you. I'm just trying to reel in quick. Okay, no Grab problem. You, you really exciting. smashed the lure. You know, one thing nice. that I appreciate, I look at the lure to see how the fish is hooked, and this guy's got both hooks in his mouth. So he nailed it right out in the open. Aaron, that was quick. How long have you been fishing here? Not long at all. We've been here maybe five minutes. This is kind of a special day. I'm fishing for the first time in my life with two Aaron's. Two yeah. Aaron's. <laughs> Aaron, welcome aboard. Well, and both double A too, right? Yeah. I, both I, double yeah. A. I was hoping we'd get a fish so you wouldn't get bored because after all, we were casting for what, four minutes? That's right. Before that's getting right. Our first fish. It took Might have even gone minutes. five. I'm Very just exciting. Just this boat back a little bit here. You know what? That's a nice fish to start off with. Beautiful. Look at oh, yeah. you. Good oh, net wow. job. High five, Aaron. Way to go. What a go. Nice. You're doing good. Don't worry. I like the run. beak on there. Beautiful. There. So there's, hold it up. That's about a. I'm guessing he's about 17 inches yeah, nice. for a gorgeous start. Fish. Yeah, he's light gorgeous. colored. They're such a predator fish. They're actually part of a perch family. It's a big perch, Okay. the walleye. But he's got big teeth. If I pull his gums back, yeah, see those see teeth? see them there, razor yeah. sharp. That's where we're using those Rapala crankbaits because they think it's a bait fish and okay. they just go for it. Nice. Yeah, he Aaron. clobbered it. He clobbered it. All right. It's nice to get nice. that whack. Oh, yeah, hit. absolutely. My first whack of the day is awesome. Good oh, yeah. yeah. He's He's a look at that. Yeah. Good. Beautiful. Good one, Aaron. Way to go, Aaron. Look at hook by the back I hook. I saw that. He wasn't going to get away. Nope. Good. Look at the size of that thing. Nice. Beautiful. Thing. Beautiful. Now, you if know, you wanted to eat one, that would probably be the good side oh, to yeah, eat. Because yeah, there, yeah. there's fish up in. Uh, the boat 10 pound class here. Oh, yeah. And those are the fish that you want to put back because those are the spawners, those wow. are the breeders, but look at, perfect eating size. He's got a couple leeches on the inside of the mouth. Oh, yeah, look at so that. So they're just hitchhiking. Oh. Beautiful. That's a nice, healthy walleye. Yeah. And you're ready with your beak yeah. pliers. Got the uh, Rappel pliers always on my hip. You, you tag nice. them good. The one thing I like about Rapala lures, they use wow. good hooks. Oh, yeah. They're nice and sharp. <laughs> yeah, and the sure, got... sure, sure set is a uh, yep. good hook. Good, nice walleye. Beautiful. Most guys would be happy with a fish like that for eating. Absolutely. You get two nice fillets. Out of curiosity, I'm going to just get a quick measurement. Hopefully, he won't fly out of my hands. This guy is 18. You know what? It's over 19. Yeah, nice. good fish. Beautiful. Nice fish. Okay, we're going to get him in the net, get him back Excellent. in the water. Great catch, Aaron. 
Beautiful. The nice thing is they have so much energy. If I can just, oh, he wants to go. He wants to go. Yeah, look at him go. Look at, he's going into the net. No, up. You got to go up. Come on. It's a basket net. Are we close? There, there we go. Goes. Excellent. He did a little jump. Way to go, guys. Very nice. I Excellent. can't believe you're throwing a rappel on. Well, you told me about I this. I know. I mean, this is a good. You'll see it works. Yeah. I've, it, I've done saw bass on these, but I've never fished walleye no, on they're them. good anywhere. Terrific. Bay of Quinney, um, I fish with them all over the place up north, but especially here. River fishing, they're amazing. Yeah, I'm really beginning to like the flat one a lot. I mean, it has a lot of vibration on it. Beautiful. And it dives good, especially with the lighter line. It is, and they make yeah. them, you know, seven, nine. Yeah, nine. yeah all different sizes. Different, three. different depths. Yeah. Just so you know, I know you're down to like your last two. They're quite expensive on the river. They go for about $25 oh, each. Oh, nice. If you need another one. Okay, let's make you aware of that. Price went up. You always want to be careful when you're reeling in that you don't hook the bottom. Xmark, you find fish, catch of the day. Keegan, it's Tony Brecknock calling from Canadian Sport Fishing. How are you, buddy? Good, yourself? Dynamite. Now, look, I see your nice big honking bass. So this is what I need you to do. You're going to tell me the fishing part of it, and Caden is going to tell me about the app part of it, okay? Okay, my brother and I were at my uh, mother's friend's cottage in Fergus. We kind of went out with a pond to it with a couple of our friends, and all of a sudden I, I was using a fish lure and I got a pipe. We reeled it in, it was fighting really good. We had no clue what it was. Um, we got it in, my, my little brother uh, helped me out. We were really excited, we were really excited when we got it in. We took some pictures and sent it in. Dynamite, throw okay. Caden on the line for me. Okay. Hi. Caden, now you took a picture of your brother holding up a great big fish and you decided to put it into our app, is that right? Are you fine yeah. fish app? Because I saw it on a commercial and I thought it was pretty cool and then we went up in Fergus and I helped my brother reel it in and they took a few pictures and then we let it go. It was very fun because um, it was a very big fish that I saw. Nice. All right, buddy, that's it. Closed captioning is brought to you by Arctic Armor. Warm, dry, alive. You know, if you've watched the shows for some time, you know that I love to fish in all different conditions, whether it's extremely hot or whether it's extremely cold, like ice fishing or even open water fishing in the middle of the winter time, like on the Niagara River. When one of the things that I try to do is wear the proper clothing. And when it's cold, I usually use bibs and a top or a full suit. Now what I'm wearing today is the Arctic Armor suit. And I gotta tell you, this thing is amazing. It's windproof, it's waterproof, and it's good in sub-zero conditions. One of the reasons is because of this insulation that they use, it's called Insultex. And they actually have three layers of this insulation in this suit. The suit is very lightweight, but this Insultex, it, it keeps the cold out. So one layer will keep the cold out to about minus 13 Fahrenheit, which is amazing. So let me um, clarify some things about layering, because when I was younger, and I used to wear, you know, whatever I had, I would layer it in the wintertime, and I thought that would keep me warm. That's not necessarily the case. So if you're wearing an Arctic Armor suit, it's very important that you don't layer very much, and if you layer, that you use the proper materials, something that will breathe, so that if you do start to perspire initially, especially if you're cutting holes, or moving from spot to spot, or doing a lot of things where you exert a lot of energy, but if you get moisture, that moisture won't be trapped in your body. It has to be able to vent. So don't layer too heavy if you're wearing an Arctic Armor suit because the suits will keep you very warm. And if you fall in the water, they're buoyant, and that's a good thing. Let's see if we can get this guy now, in the boat. Now, nice oh, and nice easy, fish. easy, easy, All easy. Right. Keep him away from the other boat motor. Good walleye. Mm. Ah, good good walleye. walleye. <laughs> good fighter, eh? Oh, beautiful. That, that was a hard oh, hit. I, I that was know, a hard hit I don't on know that what one. you're doing. Are you like saying something that we don't know or like to the fish? What's the energy? Where is it coming from? I don't know. You talked about having that confidence. So you got you know, it. You got to think positive, Look man. at that beauty. Yeah, and you know what? It threw the hook just when I netted it. Perfect. Nice, chunky fish. Wow. That is so beautiful. this is your biggest walleye? That's my only walleye. Well, went, biggest, sorry, I cut a small one before. One. Yeah, that's but right. But you had a bigger one than this one. No, I don't know, that's pretty big. Good that's job. a great size. Beautiful. You know what, we're gonna take a measurement on it? Yeah. And just check it out here. There. It's a very respectable fish. Oh yeah. That fish is 22. Beautiful. Nice and healthy. Look at uh, the I, colors. They almost remind me of the Detroit River walleye, you know, because the water's kind of milky there. Yeah, so they absolutely. tend to be a little bit yellow. They don't really have that yellow sides. Very pale because of the water But they color. look pretty. 
Kind yeah. of remind me of a like a rainbow almost, you know. Good fish. Okay, let's get him Beautiful. back in. Beautiful, yeah. Let's put him back in the water. And I'm going to make sure that he's nice and lively. As soon as he writes himself up, I know he's ready to go and he's done that. These fish have a ton of energy, even though we've handled them. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get that nose out. Oh, he wanted to go. There. Now you should see. Look at that. Gorgeous walleye. Come out of there. There. I'm just going to extend him out a little bit. I know he wants to go and grow. Come on. Beautiful. Wow. Good release. Aaron, that's amazing. That's number three. Way to go. You're yeah, all beautiful. showing us hey, a thing or two. It's a great time out here, and there's another day in the office now, for you guys, right? Yes. Yeah. You have less lures. Did you lose some? Or? Yeah, I think the uh, camera guy kind of picked it well, up. <laughs> what I explained to both, well, both Aaron's today when we came here is that it's real tricky here. It's like a real computer game, only it's, you know, real life. There's so much structure in different sections of the river that you're constantly hitting bottom. And if you're a person that gets all excited and you feel something and you set the hook, you could lose your lure so easy because there's so many sticks and stuff. Because in the rivers, you know, stuff falls in or gets pulled out when the water's high, then it gets pushed down river and then it gets stuck and a lot of times you don't see it. And there's also rocks and who knows what else in there. Oh, I lost a lure today. I know. Happens. I haven't lost one yet, but you never know. But this is what we've been using. Can you believe it? They all happen to be Rapalas, but they're really interesting Rapalas. These are called the Dives 2 Flat Series. That's a number seven. I've got a bigger one in here. Okay, so this is one that dives deeper. Here, let me show you a whole bunch of them, because that shows you what happens when you try to get one. So you can see that they're flat. This one has a longer lip, so it dives deeper. But then we also have some that are flat, but dive shallower. So where there's, here's a, this is one that goes to about three, four feet. You see the one with the two stuck to it? They just like living together, okay? So those are all, you can see a shorter lip, so they only go down to about three feet, but they have the same tantalizing action. And then the last one is the thug. So this is it here. Let me just show you. I like to keep them together just for comfort. Actually, that's what happens when you stick all the crankbaits in one little compartment. But you know what? These lures, it doesn't matter whether you're casting, trolling, fishing the Great Lakes. I'm talking like Lake Erie, the Bay of Quinney. These things work everywhere, even in Northern Ontario. Fisher girl! Catch the passion! And when you're fishing in deeper water, it's often difficult to use a stationary bobber. There's so much line below that it makes it so difficult to cast. That would be the perfect time to use a slip bobber. Now what I have here is a classic slip bobber. You can see that the line goes through the float so the float can slide up and down very easily. What's stopping the float at the bottom is a split shot sinker and then about six to ten inches below is a hook. Now this is an ideal rig to use in deeper water because this bobber stop that's right here, all it is is a piece of Dacron line and it's tied on a uni knot. It's what stops the float from going any further up the line. But that bobber stop can be set at 10 feet from the hook and it can actually be reeled right onto your reel so that when you cast, all you have is the float about four to 10 inches away from your hook. So that means it's easy to cast but when it hits the water, the line goes through the float. So if you can use your imagination, it's running through up to 10, 10 feet or even more until it hits the bobber stop. And that's when the float is engaged and it starts working. And of course, when you have a fish on, it'll pull it under. You know, I use a lot of fuel, whether I'm going to my fishing locations or uh, I'm out in a boat or if I'm doing domestic stuff around the house, cutting the grass, blowing some snow, or we're using snowmobiles and ATVs to get to our fishing locations. One thing that you can encounter if you lose a lot of fuel is that you can get water buildup in your fuel for different reasons. Could be condensation, could be water splashing into your vent on your boat and getting down into your gas tank. Well, some people will try to take that bad fuel and they'll try to dispose of it and dump it, which you shouldn't do. Other people will have problems. They'll get stranded out on the lake or they won't be able to use their equipment. A really good idea is to have a fuel additive on hand so that you can actually burn the water that's in your fuel. If you do that, you're actually doing your part for conservation because you'll be able to use that fuel and you won't have any problems and you'll get on with whatever you're planning on doing.
Good job. Is this fun or what? Casting crankbaits like this? Absolutely. Fish? You know what? I just cast it right behind the boat. Yeah. And as you were pulling ahead a little bit, yeah. oh, I just nice. uh, just nailed nice it. Beautiful. Oh, tons nice. of power. Oh yeah. Good. Fish. Excellent. There we go. All right. Beautiful. You, you're working your way up. They're getting bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I figure, you know, if we can get up to 10 pounds by the end of oh, the day, yeah. we're doing good. Yeah. All right. There. Good. I'm now you kidding. can take the crankbait out. Straight Look on it. the net there. You're going to hold the fish up. You want me nice. to grab the rod? I'll nice. hold that. Nice sure, line. They're very respectable, very nice. eh? Oh, very respectable. Very healthy fishery. Nice I mean, light colored fish. Let's be honest, getting a 10 pounder is very rare. That's an extremely rare fish, but hey, if we'll you can take, get them we'll up take to these five all pounds day long, day, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm take That's that. a solid four okay. pound fish. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at the teeth on them. I know. Look at, I mean, look I at the fangs at the top. You don't really think yeah, of a I walleye would, with teeth. I wouldn't but look do at the that size if of those I teeth. was you. You know, just think <laughs> I think every time you catch one, they keep getting bigger. Tough work fingers. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get him in the water. Perfect. And you know what? He's going to revive very quickly. So one, one signal that the fish is ready to go is he's going to turn from being belly up to right side up. So just watch him here in one sec. Doesn't take long. He's working it. He's working it. Come on. I don't want to rush him. He's getting his energy back. I'm giving you a play by play here. Come on. Come on. That's it. There he goes. He's ready to, oh, when, yeah. when they're ready, they take <laughs> off. Eh? Oh yeah, Just absolutely. like a shot, no problem. Good Not job, one. Aaron. I saw and how lightly you set the hook, which I like, because yeah. you weren't sure if it was a Oh, wow. good one. Yeah. Good yeah. One. Good one. Beautiful. Oh. Lots of fight, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 It's a very good nice Especially with, guy. like, medium wow. action gear. Holy cow. Beautiful. Woo. Look at it. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Oh, look at that. The hook just <laughs> fell okay. out. Do I get an assist? Nice. <laughs> you get an assist. Look Absolutely. It. Nice, chunky very wall nice. eyes. Excellent. Go. Now, what does this go to show you? You don't have to get up at like four in the morning, be out on the spot. I mean, we're in the Absolutely middle not. of the afternoon Good day. and we're go getting walleyes that guys would love to catch. They would get up at four in the morning to try to get walleyes like this. Yeah, that's Gorgeous gotta be a four fish. pound fish. Oh yeah, Beautiful. yeah, solid. Here, quick measurement. Boom, bada beam, bada boom. 22 inches. We got nice. a good Way walleye. Go. Another fish. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna put him in the net with yep. the crankbait, no yeah. problem, because okay. we want to make sure he's happy, because we want somebody else to enjoy it, either catch it or catch it and eat it. Nice. What gets me is Beautiful how they fish. revive like instantly. We haven't been keeping them out too long, but they got so much energy. This guy's ready to go already. See if I can just get the net. Find his oh yeah. There he goes. And notice <laughs> when they take off like pike. None of this like just slowly. No, I just, just got splashed too. I know. Nice. He's ready. Oh, Beautiful. Beautiful. You better do that. I'm gonna go cast. Okay. Yeah. You okay. go right ahead. You know, not all the tips that I give are directly related to fishing. I'm gonna give you one that's indirective, but you know what? You're gonna enjoy your fishing more. There are times when we don't use our boats. For example, we have one boat down in Florida, which will sometimes sit for about three months. Here in Ontario, in the wintertime, we very seldom use our boats between, let's say, January and March, because most of the places are frozen other than the Niagara River. Plus, it's too cold to fish anyway. So when those boats are in storage, there's a chance that the fuel is going to accumulate water, probably from condensation because of the fluctuating temperatures. In Florida, it can be 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and then it can drop down to 70, 80 degrees Fahrenheit at night, and you get a lot of condensation and water building up in the tank. In Canada, it's the opposite. You know those lawnmowers that you don't use in the wintertime, or the snow blowers you don't use in the summertime? Those can all build up water in the gas. And there's a problem that can arise, which is called fuel separation. That's where the fuel is on top and the water accumulates on the bottom. And when you go to start your engine of whatever the equipment is, it can foul it up so that it doesn't start because there's too much water in the fuel. It can also corrode the inside of the tank and also other components of your engine. So fuel separation is very bad. One thing that I do to eliminate it is use K100, which is a fuel treatment that literally burns any water, free water that's in the gas. That way it makes all of the fuel burnable, which is what you want. You want good hot combustion in your engine. So if you want to eliminate problems when you're fishing, cutting the lawn, blowing the snow, use K100 fuel treatment.
the net. Beautiful. He's a big one. Is it a big one? Yep. It's a nice one. Oh yeah, nice. Look okay. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Oh, 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 big head shake. Yes. Nice. There you Good go. job. Beautiful fish. I mean, this could spoil us. <laughs> Yeah, don't, we are getting spoiled Don't here. tell anybody about the lure, okay? Because it's a really good lure for walleye. Just, <laughs> I want to get that straight. Okay, Aaron? Mom's the word. I'll stick to the story. Okay, we're using worms. All right. Worms with a marshmallow. Beautiful. Okay. You threw the one hook. Thank you, sir. Nice. There. Good job. You know, the funny thing is, what time did we start today? 11? Yeah. So it's not like we started early and we're getting fish, like middle of the afternoon. Look how thick they are. You don't have to wake up super early. No, no, this is great. Especially if you worked all night. So, I mean, yeah. I've heard people sometimes, you know, work nights and then they fish. I'm not, yeah. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. Okay. Okay, okay we're going to get it back in the net. Take this out of here yep. quick. I'll hold them real quick. Uh, you know what? The other one just tagged. No problem. Ah, uh, hold on. Hold on. Got it. Perfect. Nice. There you go. Okay, nice fish. Beautiful. We're going to get them back in the net. Excellent. Good Let job. Let revive. Good net job. You were here in lightning speed. Two seconds flat. Oh, you yeah. No messing around. No. Nope. Okay, come on. Beautiful. He's getting right. He's going to take off. That's Three. Four pound fish. Two. Oh, yeah, chunky. One. Zero. Minus. He's going to. <laughs> okay, come on. Come on. Don't give me a sleeper. Oh. I know he's happy. He's going to take off. There, there he, he goes. Is. Oh, that was so smooth and slow. Nice. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. Yamaha, Conquer Outdoors, Insect Defend Patch, Deep Free Protection from Biting Insects, Dickies, Quality Workwear Since 1922. Aaron, there's no such thing as a little fish. You can just lift that guy straight up. All right. You know nice. what? I tell the viewers when we get a nice mix of small fish and big fish, it tells you that it's a very healthy fishery. Perfect. So this guy's not very old. Aaron, what do you think, two years old? Maybe yeah. if that, he's got a little Small. growing to do yet. He Pretty has juvenile. the potential of being a 10, 12 pounder. Beautiful. You know what, for his size though, look at how he nailed this crankbait. I gotta be careful, those hooks are sharp. Yeah, he really got a good yeah, hold of it Yeah, he got it head first. Yeah. So look, here's a nice, we'll call this a juvenile. Oh. <laughs> he's on, trying to get away from you then. <laughs> do you like that tossling? I'm gonna get him in the water real quick, but that's a juvenile. I'm guessing he's maybe two years old. 